During the First World War, the Imperial German Army was looking for ways to attack their enemy without putting their troops in danger, or in this case, to be able to fire upon a target not within sight. The Paris gun was an especially impressive feat, as it was the first man-made system capable of launching a projectile over 42 kilometers into the sky, well into the stratosphere. This feat would not be repeated until the V2 rocket program during the Second World War. The range of the cannon was so distant that the Coriolis effect would have to be taken into consideration while calculating the firing trajectory. The rounds would take roughly 3 minutes from firing to reach the city of Paris, being fired from 130 kilometers away, giving another edge to the weapon as those in the city suspected high altitude bombing or a zeppelin. Designed by Krupp and manufactured from a German naval cannon originally designed for warships, the building of naval vessels had been significantly delayed and had caused the Germans to repurpose the weapons to the Western Front. The cannon would be used from March to August 1918 with the moniker Kaiser Wilhelm Geschütz or Emperor William Gunn. Initially, the barrels were used for the 38 cm SK L45 Max cannon, but as they would be worn out, they would become rebored from 380mm to 210mm. As they were reworked, they would go on to be repurposed once more for the Paris gun, with extensions making it reach 21 meters in length. A significant factor to its usage was the replacement of barrels, as every time the cannon was fired, it would wear the barrel considerably. Every round that would be fired out of the cannon would be systematically numbered, and each one would have to be a fraction larger than the last to compensate for the wear of the barrel, as each would have to be larger to ensure a gas seal. After 65 rounds had been fired out of the barrel, it would be replaced with a fresh one, and the old would be returned to Krupp to be refitted for 238mm projectiles. The projectiles themselves were incredibly large 106 kilograms or 234 pound high explosive shells, encased in a steel shell lined with two brass driving bands housing two explosive chambers ignited by fuses. The shells themselves contained 7 kilograms or 15 pounds of TNT relatively small for the immense size of the cannon. The significance of the cannon was quickly made apparent, as the munitions would cause damage, but served more as a psychological warfare tool, as during the initial bombardments of Paris on the 23rd of March 1918, 21 shells were fired and 15 people were killed, with 36 wounded. However, by the 27th, the inhabitants of the city had caused such a great panic since the onset of the bombing that the amount of people trying to escape the bombing, numbering in the thousands, sought to leave the sieged city, but due to the intense demand, ticket sales out of the capital were suspended. The gun itself would be deployed and mounted on a large fixed turntable, and due to its nature of being a naval gun, would be operated by 80 Imperial German Navy sailors. Due to the strategic value of the cannon and its significant report while being fired, the battery would be emplaced in a wooded area near Crepy and Lone in German occupied territory, surrounded by a number of smaller artillery batteries that would fire in succession with the Paris gun. This would work as a noise screen to conceal its position from enemy troops and reconnaissance aircraft. The Paris gun would remain somewhat effective during its use, but the accuracy of the weapon varied drastically, as it was only capable of accurately hitting a city sized target. The most significant event in its usage was on the 29th of March, when during a mass, a round from the Paris gun had struck the roof of St. Gervais a St. Protais church, collapsing the roof onto the congregation, with 91 people being killed and an additional 68 being wounded. During its usage, a total of 250 people would be killed, with 620 being wounded, as well as over 300 shells would be fired during its use. As the war came to a close, the Paris gun would be brought back into Germany and then destroyed by the retreating Germans to prevent the weapon from falling into enemy hands. Even the design documents were destroyed. As US troops advanced further into enemy territory, they found mounting platforms attached to the rails built for the Paris gun, but the gun itself was never found.